Brother Simon's 66th article, Our Inheritance. In Romans 8, 17, Paul the Apostle of the nation tells us, also known as the body of Christ, that we have an allotment as children of God, not only that, but we will be joint enjoyers of Christ's allotment. Pardon my French, but that is some heavy... Duty mad. The Greek word for allotment. Kleronomeo. It's translated. Kleronomo. Or transliterated. Kleronomo. And Strong's Concordant defines the word as to inherit. The Greek and English keyword concordant, so the concordant literal New Testament defines the word thusly enjoy, have use, or enjoyment of by means of an allotment. The root word of allotment is lot, the Greek word for lot. Clear. It's transliterated. Claro. Claro. And Strong's Concordant defines the word as to assign by lot. The Greek English keyword concordance of the concordant literal New Testament defines the word thusly cast a lot, cast the lot from which our phase lot is cast has come, obtain an inheritance. I kind of dig obtain an inheritance. So by telling us believers we have an alignment, Paul was actually telling us that we are going to enjoy. The attaining of an inheritance from our Father, sweet. In Ephesians 1, 11, 12, Paul goes on to tell us that our lot was cast also in Christ Jesus, being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, that we should be for the Lord of his glory, who are pre-expectant in Christ. Believers were predestined, designated beforehand by God the Father, the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel, intention of his will, that we should be for the praise of his glory, not ours. Which perfectly jives with what Paul tells us a few verses later in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. 2, 8 through 10. For in grace, through faith, are, faith, through faith are you saved. And this is not of you. This is not out of you, it is God's approach, present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting, for his achievement are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand that we should be walking in them. We are saved because we are God's achievement. As for you, free willies out there, yes, I'm looking at you, Mr. and Mrs. Borman again. Dig what Paul says, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand. God makes our good works, and he did it a long time ago. We got absolutely nothing to do with it. Now back to our regularly scheduled allotment. In Ephesians 2, 4-7, through 7, Paul tells believers, Yet God, being rich in mercy, because of his vast love with which he loves us, we also, being dead to the offenses and the lust, vilifies us together in Christ. In grace are you saved. And rouses us together and ceases together among the celestials in Christ Jesus, that in the up oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In short, believers, once vilified, made alive, Beyond the reach of death and glorified, trust me, we will be glorified, we'll be conciliating the sovereignties, the authorities, the world mights of this darkness, the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials in the ages or eons to come. God dealt graciously with us and we deal in kind with these celestial beings. That is what I call perfect symmetry. Paul doubles down in Ephesians 3.10, saying that now may be known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the, the ecclesia, the multifarious wisdom of God. The ecclesia is the body of Christ. We shall be displaying the multifarious wisdom of God to the celestial beings of unimaginable power. Us, the stupidity of the world, the weakness of the world, and the ignoble and the 
contemptible things of the world, 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 28, that us, when these social beings see what God has done with us, you know, the more united, they will be overwhelmed by his multifarious wisdom. Vilified and glorified believers will work alongside Christ to conciliate the universe so that eventually, at the end of the ages, he may be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father and he should be nullifying all sovereignty and all authority and power. 1 Corinthians 15 through 24. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty damned amazing inheritance. Sure beats Aunt Mary's. I know. I peeked you. Get the toaster oven.